or you're watching a special Reporters Plus programme this Saturday about the growth of cinema and cinema going in Saudi Arabia. To tell us more, we'll be speaking to Thomas Paga, the director of this documentary, and uh, Kristin Diwan, who's a senior resident scholar at the Arab Gulf States Institute in Washington, D.C. Well, let's start with uh, Thomas Paga. He joins us now from the city of Rennes in Brittany uh, here in France. Thomas, first of all, why did you and your colleagues uh, decide to make this film and how easy was it for you all to make? Um, hello, very nice to be with you. Uh, um, we decided to make this film because we thought that it's funny enough because we we thought we knew too little about Saudi Arabia because it's very hard to find out about a country which, you know, at some at one point is um, unwanted. Nobody wants to uh, have anything to do with it because you know the Hashogi affair and everything. And the next minute or six months afterwards, uh, everybody wants to talk to Saudi Arabia and to um, to get closer to Saudi Arabia because you know uh, the Ukraine cry, uh, war has has made it impossible to go without uh, Saudi oil. So we thought it was very interesting to um, to find out about this the the contradictions uh, in this country. And was it easy to film? Uh, it was. It was very, it, it was very surprising because we thought we'd be um, renting a car and and going around like we do in Europe, you know, for our reports usually. Uh, and we we knew very little about. That's how little we knew about Saudi Arabia. That we thought we were going to be free to move around, and we were not. In the sense that we were accompanied by someone uh, who drove us around. In a, in a very big SUV and uh, took selfies everywhere we went. And uh, he was a very nice person, I must say, but uh, but we felt like we were under surveillance. And you saw in the documentary, there was a couple of times when, um, well, he interrupted us once. And it's just in general, we felt like that people were very um, concerned about how far they could go with what they said. What did you learn about the reasons, the main reasons behind this growth in cinema in Saudi Arabia? Sorry, I, I couldn't catch your, your I, question. The reason... I, I was asking you, what did you learn during and after the filming of this report about the reasons behind this growth in cinema? The reasons behind the, the opening cinemas? Um, what I think um, it has everything to do with Mohammed bin Salman himself being a young man being very keen on on um i think he's a he's a big well your maybe your guest can confirm he's he's a he's a fan of video games he's into a lot of a lot of the things the young people from the west are into basically and and uh, i think it was a concern of his that his country was um um uh, maybe uh, f he felt, and the young people in general, I think, feel like they're being left out of the world in general. And that's a huge concern for them. And I think it's it's a relief to finally feel that they belong to, you know, the, the modern world, which goes to the cinema and, and is free to to do a certain number of things that they weren't free to do before. So I think he has, in that sense, he, he gained the support of the youth. And also, it's a way to uh, consolidate his power because obviously he saw, um, and we talk about this in the film, we, uh, he saw what happened during the, uh, the Arab Spring. And, um, and I think he felt that it was impossible to keep locking the youth down, as it were, um, and sort of letting it see what's going on in the world through their apps, through their phones, through the internet, and not letting them do what, um, you know, the, the young people in the world do. So, um, so I, I, and, and also I think, so it's not, it's not a concern of his, I think, to, to gain this electoral support of the young people because there's no uh, democracy there. But it's, um, it's important, I think, for him to... Um, to feel like he has this basis of legitimacy. But maybe I'm I'm going a bit too far in, in what I can say about this. 
Okay, Thomas, let's uh, bring in our guest this evening. She's yeah. uh, Christine Diwan. Uh, she's a senior a resident a scholar at the Arab Gulf States Institute uh, in Washington, D.C. Thank you so much for being with us for this special edition here on France 24. You have, have of course, uh, seen this documentary already. Uh, are we really seeing an opening up and an increase in freedoms in Saudi Arabia? Well, it is very complicated, um, but I think actually your, your filmmakers captured it quite well. Um, there is an opening, there's no question. I mean, this is a country that was extraordinarily, extraordinarily closed, especially to the entertainment sectors, to this kind of cultural sectors, um, and to huge elements of the outside world. Of course, they had... Um, religious pilgrims, which are extremely important to the kingdom, but to visit the kingdom was actually quite difficult for most people. Um, so that kind of openness, both um, to women, we should mention, and also to these kind of cultural and, and entertainment types of life um, has really been quite uh, rapid uh, and quite significant, um, as well as opening to this broader world. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, as, as Tomas noted, there's a lot of uh, still fear within the kingdom with this leadership, which has amassed uh, a lot of power, is really centralized power within Saudi Arabia, and is very keen on um, keeping everyone to message. So I think uh, you're fine within the kingdom if uh, you know you, you're going along with the program, but if you step a bit out of line, um, you know there can be severe punishments for that. So clearly, the political opening is not accompanied these kind of cultural and social openings. And Kristen, as we saw in this film, 1979 was a key year for cultural shutdowns. Is that a year that the kingdom now regrets, perhaps? That's definitely the message that they're communicating. Um, they've really kind of linked themselves to this 1979 as a way to depict a time when um, basically the stronger Islamist order, uh, a more Islamic civil society was promoted within the kingdom and that these people were granted a lot more power. They've also used the 1979 figure. It's the same year as the Iranian revolution, of course, too. So there's that link to Iran. Um, and I think to some degree, this is a, there's some truth to that, for sure. This was a, a time when uh, that kind of uh, Islamic insurgence and the idea of Islam being a solution and, and uh, can play a larger role in governance and even overturning monarchies and the Shah um, really rose. Um, but it's also a way, I think, to sort of displace the, um, the role of the state um, and, you know, this long period that we've been going through and to, you know, kind of see that they're reclaiming a, a past that's still Saudi. Um, and so I think in that way, it's, it's very clever because it's a way to make the changes that are happening right now, which are quite, you know, different and shocking for many Saudis. And to say that this is something that we have in us from the past is something that we strayed from and that we're going back to that. I want to bring back in the uh, director of this film, uh, Toma uh, Paga. Uh, Toma, one of the biggest changes or one of the biggest uh, differences or the, one of the main themes, should I say, that we saw in your film is the presence of women. We saw them time and again during this film. Tell us more about that. Yeah, we were the first ones to be surprised, to be honest. Uh, we, we did want to show... Um, a woman directing a film. We thought that was important because it, it encapsulated everything we wanted to, you know, uh, all the all the contradictions that we wanted to show because th uh, women are now allowed to drive. They have a choice uh, uh, to, to wear an, uh, the veil or not, to wear the abaya or not. Um, so it's quite a... That's the most spectacular, I think, I would say, change that has been going on in the, in the past few years and to see them and to see an you know an unveiled woman directing a film in Saudi Arabia we thought was a very strong uh, image uh, and at the same time um, women it's um, I think well um, I think that's women very a heavy burden in Saudi Arabia because you know they um, they they have more freedom but they're also being used by the regime to uh, to legitimate to 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 um, to um, as as a way to legitimate a lot of things, and I think that's 
you know, for example, we saw Fatima al banawi in the film. She's not, um, I think she's very careful about the words that she's using and she's not going to criticize the MBS. She's not going to, um, you know, criticize the institutions that MBS has put in place and his centralization of power, his use of, of violence against his opponents and, and the lack of democracy in the country. So I think it's a very difficult, uh, um, you know, it's also... I mean, it's it's better to be able to to drive and to and, and and that degree of freedom that they've gained, but it's also it's also something that the the, the regime uses. And and Kristin Dewan, just very very briefly, how do you see Saudi and Sa- Saudi Arabia and Saudi culture developing in the future? Just very briefly. Well, they're really keen on it. Um, you know, I think they showed the the Saudi Ministry of Culture has nine new cultural commissions. Um, they see this as a real way to champion a new sort of Saudi voice in the world. You notice that one guy who said it's our right to tell our own stories in a way to project a new kind of Saudi nationalism that brings in these young people and to provide a different image for Saudi Arabia as well. Um, so it's definitely something they're hugely investing in right now. Okay, uh, Kristin Diwan, who's the uh, senior resident scholar at the uh, Arab Gulf States Institute in Washington, D.C., and, of course, Thomas Paga there in the city of Rennes here in France, who uh, made that documentary. Both of you, thank you very much for being with us for this special Reporters Plus edition here on France 24.